guys like these sections so far? Not too bad, right? 10.1, that was old stuff. This is going to be a little bit of new stuff. So properties of exponents. We're going to talk about three of them because there's, there's three properties. The first one is called the product property. Product property. It starts with this question. What does 5 to the third actually mean? So it doesn't mean 5 times 3, does it? No, this is actually not 15, it's 125, because you're doing 5 times 5 times 5. Very good. So we can extend that, right? Even with, with x's, what's x to the fourth actually mean? Times x times x times x. So 4 times, right? x times x times x times x. Here's where the the product property comes in play. It says, sure, you understand this. This is we, we've already covered that. Sure, you understand this. But what would happen if I wanted to take x to the third times x to the fourth? What's going to happen if I want to multiply some items with common bases, x's are the same, but have our exponents up there? How do I do it? And here's what it comes down to. We, if we understand this concept, look what this does for us. Check it out. x to the third really means x times x times x. You guys know that, yes? And this is another multiply, so I'll put a big multiply just so you see where that's coming from. That one, well, we just did that. x times x times x times x. What did you use parentheses? Well, that's our x to the third. And that's our x to the fourth. Do I need parentheses? No, not really. I don't need them because I'm just multiplying here and multiplication is commutative and associate. So it doesn't matter really how we group them. Are you okay that this is the same thing as this right here? Now, is there another way you could represent x times x times x times x times x times x times x? How many x's do you have? Seven. Yes, seven x's. So this is really x to the seventh. Are you okay with that so far? How do you feel all right with that? Now this is all fine and dandy, right? You know you could write out all these x's. But what if I gave you this? x to the 34th times x to the 21st. Are you going to want to write out all those x's, x times x times x times x times x times x times x? Stop me when you're bored. So are you seeing the pattern? Are you seeing what's happening here? What this says is if I have three x's being multiplied together here and four x's being multiplied to get together here, all together I have seven x's being multiplied. Is there a way you can get directly from here to here without doing this crap? Sure. What do you do with those exponents? Add them. That is the product property you just learned. Okay? So if you have exponents being multiplied together, this is the key thing for you, ladies and gentlemen. Please listen. Stop writing for, for a second. Here's where people make a mistake. It's very, very easy to do this right now. It's very easy to go, oh, x to the third times x to the fourth, that's x to the twelfth. But isn't it easy to do that? Because you see multiply and your brain wants to go three times four is twelve. Yeah. Right? But it's not. What you're actually doing here is working with exponents. This is x times x times x. Mm -hmm. This is another x times x. That's another four x's. When you combine those, you count up those exponents. You essentially add them together. So the product property, it isn't a multiplication of exponents. It's you add them together. So product property says, if you have x to the, I'm going to be general right here. If you have x to the m times x to the m, in order to do this operation and get them combined, you have x to the m, plus what was it? Plus n. Plus n. <coughs> that right there is your product property. It says if you're multiplying common bases together, x's times x's, you simply add those exponents. What do you think? You okay with it or not? How many people feel okay with it? You understand where the concept comes from, right? You could essentially write them all out every single time if you want to. Let's try a few examples here, and then hopefully we'll try to talk about the power property.
So what do you say? How much is y to the 8th times y to the 3rd? Are we going to get y to the 24th? Y to the 11th? Why? How do we get 11? What are you doing there? Yeah, because you got y, 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 y. You have 8 y's here times another y, y. 3 y's there. If you add them all up, you're going to get 11 y's. So this is y to the 8 plus 3. Why to the eleventh? I know you're going to ask this question. Do I have to show the middle step? No, I, I honestly don't care as long as you get the answer. As long as you get it right, you're not going to show that middle step later on. For right now, if you'd like to, if that helps you out, sure. Show that step. You're adding the eight plus three. That's what this says to do. Okay, but we know that that's going to become eleven. Okay, do that one for me, please. Do z to the fifth times z to the ninth. It's kind of nice because they go quick, huh? Z to the what? 14th power. That's it. We're adding those exponents when we have those common bases being multiplied together. Now, one question we, we, we should have is, well, there's no numbers out front here. There's no. Can we deal with those numbers out front? So, for, for instance, what if I gave you something like 4x to the fifth times 6x cubed? 4x to the fifth times 6x cubed. Well, I'll show you why this works the way it does, and then I'll, I'll tell you what we can do with it. First thing, understand that 4x to the fifth really means 4 times x to the fifth, yeah? And 6x to the third really means 6 times x to the third. Agree? Now, what's kind of nice about multiplication is it's commutative and associative. It's, it means that basically I can arrange anything I want to in any order. So really what we could do, this is the same thing as, watch carefully, this is going to be 4 times 6 times x to the fifth times x to the third. Agree? Since it's all being multiplied, it doesn't matter the order I'm multiplying it. I could put the 4 and the 6 first if I want to. Now, can you multiply 4 times 6? How much are you going to get? Can you multiply x to the 5th times x to the 3rd? What are you going to get? X to, not x to the 15th? No, x to the 8th. So this answer is 24 x to the 8th. Hey, now, now look. Could you get directly from here? Oops, not that one. Could you get directly from here to here? Yeah. Sure. Essentially what this says, you don't have to show this middle step. I just proved it to you that this is possible because multiplication is a uh, commutative and associative. Essentially what you do is you multiply the numbers, you multiply the exponents. Just don't forget that when you're multiplying, you're actually adding those exponents. Why? Because you could write like this every single time. Not sure if you're all right with that one. Right. Give that a try on this example. Eight y to the fourth times seven y to the ninth. We'll try one after this and then be done for today. Can you do the numbers? What are you going to get for your numbers? And then b to the 10th power? Worry about this one. What are you going to get for your numbers? 56. 56. And y to the how much? 13. Show of hands, somebody got 56, y to the 13th. All right, now the next one. We got negative 2, a to the 4th, b to the 10th. We've got 8, a to the 5th, b to the 3rd. Are they being multiplied? Yes. yes. As a matter of fact, that, that's multiplication. And every single thing in here is multiplication. We're multiplying a whole bunch of stuff. So can you apply this principle to that problem, do you think? 
Yeah. Firstly, take care of the numbers. What's your numbers going to be when you multiply them? Negative 16. Negative 16. Are you seeing where the negative 16 is coming from? You could write this all out, right? Negative 2 times A, negative, I'm sorry, A to the 4th times A to the 5th, and B to the 10th times B to the 3rd. We could, we could do this, this again. If you really want to show this, you could reassociate all these things and regroup them and, and, and commute them and get negative 2 times 8, A to the 4th times A to the 5th, B to the 10th times B to the 3rd. You could move them all around if you really wanted to, couldn't you? But you could get directly from here to your answer, too. We do negative 2 times 8 gives you negative 16. That gives you negative 16. Look at that. A to the fourth times A to the fifth gives you how much? A to the ninth. Look at it. That would give you A to the ninth, wouldn't it? B to the tenth times B to the third gives you B to the thirteenth. Look at it. That would give you B to the thirteenth. So you can get the same thing either way. You can show me this step if you'd like to, or you can go directly from here to here, provided you understand that this must be applied to that situation. How many people do understand that? Okay. Well, let's continue talking about some of these exponents and their, their rules. We learned one rule last time. We learned that if we're going to multiply <coughs> x to some power times x to some power, where we have those common bases, how we do that operation to combine them to one base instead of x to the m times x to the n, we can make it x to the, we add those exponents together. So when you multiply these common bases, you're actually adding those exponents. That was because you have x times x times x times however many x's here, and then another x times x times x. And to get all of them together, you'd add up however many you have. Were you okay with that rule? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can apply it to this problem. <coughs> I think we did one very similar to this last time before we left. What we learned was that as long as we multiply the numbers together, and then the powers of each common base together, we're going to have our answer right. So, what's the number that we're going to get when we multiply negative 4 r to the 6th s squared times negative 3 r to the 3rd s to the 5th? Positive or negative 12? Positive. Good, because a negative times a negative is a positive. So, for sure, we're going to get 12. Now, can you tell me r to what power? How are you getting the 9? Where are we getting the 9 from? Good, because notice what we learned last time is we're actually multiplying everything. It's all being multiplied together. And since it's all multiplication, we could reorder those, reassociate them, we could recommute them, and therefore we could make the A's right next to each other. We'd have this situation, and we'd have to add our exponents. So we know for a fact that we could do R to the 6 plus 3, or R to the 9th. Now you have to be okay with R to the 9th. Okay, and lastly we have an s squared times an s to the fifth. We could organize it s to the how much? Seven. And here's why if you want to see it again. Again, you could make it, if you want to show this, you can. You'd have negative four times negative three. You could put the r's next to each other. You could put the s's next to each other. And you'd get exactly the same thing. That gives you the twelve r to the ninth s to the seventh. That's as much as we can do. That's as far as we can go with that particular problem. Now there's one more we can look at. Let's see if we can extend this concept to more than just a couple items being multiplied together. For instance, 2x to the third times 4x times 5x to the seventh. 